Hello and welcome everyone to Creative Campfire. We are so glad to have you in this space, which is meant to be a fun and informal and inspiring conversation with New Hampshire artists. I am Amanda Whitworth, the current State Artist Laureate, and I am joined by Ginny Lupi, the Executive Director of New Hampshire State Council on the Arts, and I'll kick it over to her. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. We're really looking forward to this conversation with our artists. And um, uh, please put any questions that you might have in the chat. We will put some biographical information of our artists in the chat as well so that you can get to know them a little bit better that way. And um, I'm going to hand it back now to Amanda. Great. So we um, first, I want to send my gratitude out to Ginny and um, her support team at the council for giving me the space to have this partnership and be in conversation. This is um, our last creative campfire of this particular series, and it's been well, it's filled my cup. So it's been so wonderful to be in conversation. So thank you for your partnership and support. Uh, today, I am joined by three uh, extraordinary uh, artists here. And rather than run off their biographies, I am going to ask each of them a series of questions to get us oriented to who they are and where they come from. So Pedro, I'm going to start with you. Yes. <laughs> awesome. So, what is your full name? My full name is a little bit tricky. It's a Portuguese name. So it's Pedro. My middle name is Henrique. And I have two last names, Flor Pimentel. But I just go by Pedro Pimentel. I think it looks better on screen. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Awesome. And where are you coming from in New Hampshire today? I'm right in the capital, right in Concord, downtown. Nice. And what discipline or form does your art uh, take? I work on uh, filmmaking and photography as well. A lot of analog photography. Nice. And a little bit of writing. <laughs> Incredible. What's your favorite food? My favorite food? Oh, boy. It's probably going to be Japanese food. Anything Japanese, I'll take it. Mm, so in Concord, what's... So you've been to Moritomo's in Concord, then? Yes, I've pretty much been to every single Japanese restaurant <laughs> in Concord. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. And I might do it once or twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no shame. That's good. That's really good. Uh, tell, tell me about um, a artist who inspires you. An artist who inspires me? Um, mm -hmm. One of them who really does and have been doing for a while more in a personal level rather than in an artistic way is definitely going to be John Lennon. And I've loved John Lennon since like before high school. And, cool. you know, the way he does his works, the way he approaches things with his work, especially his solo career, just inspires me to, to keep on working on something and to put meaning into everything that I do. So he's always been a big, big focus. Excellent. And what's a recent project you're working on that's filled your cup? So the latest project that I've done, which was a couple years ago, the, one, the last one that I finalized at least, because I worked on another project that's still in the works. Um, it was The Second Life. It was a short film, about 35 minutes uh, short film that I adapted from Portuguese to English and I filmed all throughout New Hampshire. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a period film, it's a period short film that takes place um, in New England. Um, and um, it's about a guy who wanted to start a new life with, the, with a lot more experience so he would know everything, everything that was gonna happen to him and that kind of worked against him in a way. So it's from the guy in the life after narrating the whole tale cool. and uh, told from his perspective. Very cool. Uh, what's on your bucket list? 
my bucket list, travel around the world and take a lot of pictures of different countries. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, Pedro. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Amy. All right. Let's unmute. Am I unmuted? Yes, I hear you. Hi. Yay. Okay, wait, you're muted again. Let's see. Try it. She's unmuted now. No, okay. now she's got, Amy, I think we go. good to go now. Yep, we're good. Okay, amazing. Technology, <laughs> here we are. So Amy, what is your full name? My full name is Amy Lynn Peters. Excellent, and where are you in New Hampshire? I'm in Lancaster, New Hampshire, way up beyond the North, the White Mountains. Um, and it was rather chilly this morning, whole 41. I know, you just gotta cover the plants in your garden if you've got them. <laughs> cover them up still, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, what kind of art do you make? I'm a jewelry artist. Um, and I mainly focus in custom work um, by using the technique of the lost wax art. So I predominantly carve and sculpt my pieces out um, as well as sometimes I paint. And your jewelry making has a name, right? A business name. Yes, it's Aimstar. <laughs> Good, we have to get that in there. <laughs> Aimstar jewelry, yeah. Awesome. What's on your bucket list? Oh, definitely need to make a trip to Thailand. <sighs> Gotta Excellent. go. Excellent. <laughs> and Amy, what's your favorite color? Oh, indigo blue. Mm. You were quick. That's good. Some people are. Mm. I put uh, pencils a lot and that particular pencil is, that's, that's the color. That's the one. That's awesome. Tell me about a recent piece or project you've been working on that has filled your cup. Well, it's been a, a journey through COVID from starting with um, making healing jewelry that led into making just recently remembrance pieces for people who have either passed on or a pet that's passed on. So I made just recently a, a thumbprint for a father who had unexpectedly passed away. And I took it and carved it from a little piece of wax like this, the individual lines to make that thumbprint for his children. And that led into a couple more projects of the same kind of thing. And I've got to tell you, there is just nothing quite as meaningful for me mm -hmm. is being able to make something so significantly special for somebody else. It just, it takes on a whole magic of its own. My hands feel like they're guided by something else. And this beautiful piece turns out that somebody can carry the loved one that they've lost around with them forever. Wow, that's incredible. Tell me about an artist who inspires you. Ah, the artist that inspires me is Susan Mitchell. She's a painter from Raymond, Maine. She does happen to be my sister-in-law. Um, and I am so grateful to have her and learn from her. She's extremely experimental. She has no fear. She has a tremendous amount of confidence that I admire greatly and wish that I could sort of absorb a little bit of that, you know? <laughs> and she has a way of carving the it, it, your white canvas, but carving her image out with paints. It's she's she's fascinating to me. Mm. If people were to visit Lancaster, what should they see or do? Hmm. Well, first they should stop off at one of the coolest galleries. Um, it's the W. M. Rue Gallery. Pastor, and it's inside of an old bank building. So the parts of the gallery are in the vaults and they're in the original little counter spaces there and everything. 
Um, we've got a great new restaurant called Smoke and Teas. And of course, we have all of the beauty of the White Mountains all the way around us. No matter where you go, you're going to hit a, a beautiful river or a hiking trail. Uh, Lancaster is a pretty magical place. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yay. Catherine, I'm going to come to you. So, Catherine, tell us your full name. My full name is Catherine Fiona Stewart. Love it. And where are you in New Hampshire right now? I'm, I'm in Portsmouth, New Hampshire in the seacoast. Excellent. And what kind of art do you make? I'm a writer and a director and a divisor, and I work in theater, film, and dance. Kind of, I guess the word is multidisciplinary, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, you are a huge collaborator, which is really cool. Um, tell me about an ins uh, a artist who inspires you. This is really tricky for me because there's so many I want to see. Um, but if I really had to pick one, it would be Joel Willa Joe Zolar, who is the founder of Urban Bushwoman. Um, that company, through her leadership, um, really exemplifies participatory arts for me, a place where everybody can be an artist, can participate in making art um, and making helping communities have really challenging conversations. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, she's a really inspiring uh, mover and creator and instigator. Yeah, yeah, she's good trouble. That's what she does. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, are you a coffee or a tea person? Oh, absolutely a tea person, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I know this, I'm a coffee person, but <laughs> awesome. Tell me about a recent project that is filling your cup. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think I think the one I want to talk about is um, I'm currently doing an MFA in creative writing at Goddard College, a low residency, and I'm um, my creative thesis, my play is about the past, present, and future of American healthcare. And it kind of um, expands and explodes all that we know about what it means to, to have healthcare. Um, and what I, is kind of filling, the reason it's filling my cup right now is that I don't know what the destination is. The joy of being able to study at Goddard is that I have two years to, to write a play, which is which is a gift. I usually write much faster. I usually um, have a, a very broad, a clear plan of where, where I'm kind of going. And this is really, um, really slow and steady mm -hmm. and allows for a different kind of exploration. And that is really informing how I may write in the future as well. So even though it's a immensely challenging, complex um, issue. It's, uh, yeah, it's, I get very excited to get back to the desk of Rudy. Hmm. What is your turn up song? Mm. Oh, so tricky. Uh, I think it's probably come together by the Beatles. <laughs> yeah. Love. <laughs> Love. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks so much, Catherine. We appreciate it. Yay. And Jeremy, you joined us. So I'm gonna put you on the spot. If you are around and available, turn on your screen and unmute. So Jeremy, I wanna know your full legal name. Uh, uh, it's uh, Jeremy Richard O'Neill. And just take like all the vowels and throw them into O'Neill and sometimes a <laughs> Y. And you know, we say we uh, stole them from the Welsh and that's why they have to use Y's and we have all the vowels, yeah. There you go, there you that's go, right. awesome. <laughs> and where are you in New Hampshire right now? Uh, so my studio's in Goffstown, New Hampshire, yeah. Nice, yeah, nice. Yeah, so we used to live on the other side of Goffstown, but now we live uh, near the airport in Manchester. And it's just, you know, I found a, uh, a landlady who uh, doesn't realize the value of her, uh, of her property and doesn't care about money so <laughs> you are here right amazing <laughs> right? <laughs> amazing um what's your turn up song uh gosh so um i, I pretty much uh, you know want 
I don't really have a song. I have genres. I'm not really a favorites person. I've got like favorite things I like to listen to. And if I just want to be like, like really upbeat and stuff like that, I'll listen to Disney stuff. All right. Yeah. You know, so that's all good. Or I'm a big pop punk fan. So, right. you know, anything from like, uh, you know, Green Day or Teenage Bottle Rockets or the Lillingtons and stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah nice. Yeah. Love it. Um, tell me about, tell me about what you make. What form does your art take? A couple things I know. Uh, yeah. So I make stuff, um, you know, and so that's what I always tell people is that, uh, you know, I'm an artist. Um, but the great thing is I get to live, you know, because I make stuff and people love stuff, you know, like everybody's like naturally a dragon and they're hoarders and they just want more stuff and more stuff all the time. So all my sculptures, uh, which is showing my forte, um, are, you know, things like this, all these, these masks, um, these are actually uh, high end silicone mask, just like you'd see in a Hollywood movie. So you put it on someone and the mouth moves and the face moves and it doesn't take any makeup or anything. Um, and so we sell these all around the world to give people that field for collectors and stuff. Um, but then, you know, kind of like the, uh, the side thing to that is that I really love to create fantasy and bring it into a reality. So that's why I make these, because I'm making monsters, you know, that, that now people can be a monster, but I also love making things for like, for cosplay, um, or, or. So we do a lot of like Harry Potter events. We actually rent the castle in Worcester. Um, that it used to be the Higgins Armory because yeah. it's the great hall of Higgins, uh, you know, Harry Potter. Um, yeah. And so then all the things that I make are like mandrakes or pixies or things like that. Um, mm -hmm. But they're that size. And I want to try to make them look real so that cool. when you're, you know, you're buying stuff that makes you feel like you're part of that world. And so mm -hmm. that's, to me, that's my art right? It mm -hmm. is that, that creating this immersive environment, you know, this, this alternate reality that people get to, to be in and, um, you know, make it so that people don't have to use their imagination if they don't want to. Cool. Cool. Do you drink, I was going to say, do you drink coffee? But I feel <laughs> like that's not drink. a good question. You yeah. don't need coffee, Jeremy. <laughs> Here you are. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, yeah, so like caffeine doesn't really affect me a whole heck of a lot, surprisingly <laughs> enough. This is just, uh, you know, me on people. Um, but yeah, like coffee in the morning. And, you know, as long as it doesn't taste like coffee, as long as it's kind of, you know, like light and sweet, I kind of want this melted ice cream. And then, um, yeah, and then uh, in, the, in the evening, sometimes tea, when I'm feeling all sorts of refined and stuff like that. And Splash on my dad come over so i'm like oh i'll have some english breakfast tea at 11 o'clock at night while i do some stuff yeah that's awesome me on people someone needs to write a book and that's the title <laughs> that's really good that's so good um tell me about an artist um that inspires you um so i am a huge fan of history uh, you know, that was, that was my minor and, and I did a lot of stuff, um, you know, with like medieval reenactments. I've traveled all around the world doing stuff like that. Um, so I always look at like the Renaissance masters and, um, and while I have like a light appreciation for, you know, like modern art and stuff, just having done it and know how hard it is and, you know, and they were able to recreate reality in such beautiful ways that, you know, even with like modern technology and stuff like that, it's still like, you know, um, Giovanni Strassi with the veiled Madonna and stuff. And you look at that and you go, I know how he did it. I just don't get it. You know, mm -hmm. I chalk it up there with, with like airplanes and cruise ships. I yeah. understand <laughs> how it works, but I don't get it, you know? Yeah, um, cool. And so I can look at stuff like that, you know, like wander through the Louvre and go, oh my God, I read all about that and just stare at it and stare at it and yeah. stare at it you know cool um, yeah. cool awesome thank you i'm so glad that you're here i'm so glad you're all here so um i am gonna just pose a question and uh feel free um all of you to unmute as you wish um to engage in the conversation and feel free to talk with each other too 
So <clears throat> obviously we all know that this past year has um, been dif different and challenging, uh, beautiful and horrible in different kinds of ways. I'm really curious to understand um, about um, a stickiness or a challenge that maybe you haven't come out of totally or finished your product completely, but a stickiness or a messiness or a challenge that you're working through um, through this past year. I'll volunteer. Okay, Pedro. <laughs> so, well, and then, basically, I, at the end of 2018, I worked on a, on a short film called Somewhere Beyond the River, which happened to be bef like shortly before the pandemic, you know, and I was working on in post-production through 2019 and I was having some issues with it. You know, it didn't turn out to be the way that I wanted it to be. And I kind of put it on hold and I was like, I'm going to go work on it a little bit more And that extended through early 2020. That's when the pandemic started. And I was hoping that I could get to work on a new project and some, you know, and something like that, because there is always that urge to create something that if you don't do it, you get, you sit, you know, restlessly at home and then you're like, oh my God, I need to work on something. And with the pandemic, without having, without being able to work with people, which is my favorite part about filmmaking, you know, it's just, you get a whole group of people and you can work together. Um, I couldn't do anything and I was struggling by not completing this one project and I was like oh my god what am I even doing with my life I'm not finishing this up I'm not working on any of this and now I cannot work with anybody so it really forced me to work with myself so I've been I've been exploring my my um my work with the camera, I've been working a lot with the camera, all different kinds of cameras, you know, uh, medium format, 35 millimeters. Uh, I just got a super 16 millimeter camera in because I cannot work with group, big groups of people right now. It really pushed me to kind of look within and see where, where, where I'm going, I'm good at, where I'm bad at, where I need to improve, what I need to learn. And that, that was pretty much um, my challenge for the last year and a half. And I'm kind of loving it because it got, it, it, it pushed me to get to know a few things that I really did not know before. Cool. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's been like a, um, so many people talk about how the year has been like a intense artistic reckoning. Like you actually have to stop for a second and realize what you yourself want to make or what you want to say. And that kind of work is hard and lifelong and and all the things. Amy, I saw that you wanted to um, jump in. Yeah, I have to say that when um, COVID first hit and all of the shutdowns began, um, I also am an educator at the Littleton Studio School. So I was in the midst of running a 12 week program there. <clears throat> I had a, a show coming up. I had all these things coming up. And then all of a sudden, life, like the breaks of life, got put on. Boom. And I have to say, for at least a month, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't create. I just found myself like a dog chasing its tail, coming over to my workbench, kind of sitting here going, um, What do I do? And then it kind of dawned on me after a while, it's like, hey, no way, you have this immense amount of open time. You've got to focus in on something. So fortunately, there was some support from that I was so gratefully blessed with, with grants, and I was able to upgrade my wax carving tools and really, really focus in and hone in on, on just the practice of carving wax and different techniques and doing that. So although it, and, and it, you know, and it's still, it, we're still just coming out of it. It's still, it's still economically difficult to, to be an artist, at least for me right now, but the, um, as hard and as terrible as COVID was, 
there, I learned an immense amount about myself and about my art during it. So there's a certain amount of gratitude for that time that I was able to just focus. Mm, interesting. I would, I would kind of, I would agree about that, about, you know, what, what I've been hearing from, from you, Amanda there and, and Amy and, and Pedro, that sense that, that this was a moment to focus in on ourselves and but not only just you know what do I want to make or how do I develop my practice from that from that inward place but also for me what are the what are the values of my work that I need to take moving forward for me I'm a collaborative artist I'm a participatory artist I I'm often in a role where I'm bringing other people in together to make something and you know as we sit here talking about you know the the struggles that we may have felt that we feel as artists financially or or in those kinds of ways I'm like well what what about my practice perpetuates that what about my practice perpetuates oppression or racism or any of those things that I don't want to perpetuate moving out of this moment so the stickiness for me is I'm desperate to get back in the rehearsal room. I'm desperate to be back in the room making making films or theater or dance with people. But I am feeling the stall right in this very moment thinking like, well, now it's beginning to be safe again, but I don't wanna call people, other artists into the room if I can't support them financially, if I can't support them in a system where we're uh, supported emotionally and psychologically and physically and and that I have our lives supported so for me it's there's the internal but there's also that external um part of the practice that that feels really sticky for me that how do I keep the values that have really come to light in this moment so so front and center um as we move back to working together. If anyone's got any answers, like I'm totally all ears. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, the crazy wicked problem, right? Where you create inroads or small solutions or small bridges, but, in, but then it spiders off into other problems, right? So uh, that has been illuminated um, quite a bit. And I think, you know, doing, I have to say that doing work in New Hampshire is um, a special kind of process and requires a special, special kind of engagement and in many ways, community participation because of our geographic barriers or um, our demographic barriers. Um, and I'm curious about how you've been communicating your work or communicating your values, which also means how are you selling your product in New Hampshire and beyond in this moment? I mean, that's where we're selling stuff becomes so easy. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, I've had an opposite problem from a lot of artists um, because people have been home with nothing to do um, and they're not going out and, and spending money. So they're like, you know what? Maybe I'll buy a troll mask. Sure. Why not? Right. And so and and our stuff's not cheap. I mean, the, the silicone, it's all platinum based silicone, you know, mass started at like four hundred dollars and go up. Um, and then, you know, all the stuff that we sell on on Etsy you know, all the little mandrakes and stuff. So um, last year, it was always, uh, I'll work on my own stuff because I've always got a list of things that I want to make. And then I'm I'm kind of, you know, art hoary in the fact that if someone, a customer's like, hey, can you make this? I'm like, well, yeah, I'll take your money first and I'll put my thing on the shelf and I'll eventually get back to it. But there was never getting back to it. You know, it was just so fast and so furious. Um, and it kept on going so much that, you know, it's like I'm still working on back orders, you know, and the fact that, you know, our delivery time for like a mask went from, you know, 15 business days to 20 business days to 30 business days. Um, and, you know, 
And so I'm super lucky in that. Um, and I had employees. So um, when the pandemic hit, you know, we sat and we talked about, it, especially when there was the initial, you know, bonus of the, the $600 a week, uh, which exceeded what I was going to be able to pay them. So I said, hey, take the time, just do you, you know, and, and, and I'm going to lay you off and, and collect that money and so that you can have a stockpile and then we'll reevaluate where we need to be, you know, when that's done. Um, and like half of the business was doing like wholesale orders and traveling around the U.S. doing shows and stuff like that. Um, and that wasn't happening and we didn't have to do that and realize that without that big headache that this could kind of be like a one man show. Um, you know, I would just always be, you know, treading water, trying to get stuff done, but that's where I'm at right now. Um, because I'm not, I'm not, um, secluded in New Hampshire. You know, it's like my stuff's got, you know, it's literally, I think we've sent stuff to every country in the world right now. Um, and, you know, and we're getting more stuff every day. So it's, uh, you know, I, I'm blessed with abundance, but it hasn't led to a lot of creativity. The only thing that we really had to put on hold was the events that we do. Um, and honestly, that's kind of like a mixed blessing because um, I'm not a money guy. So I, I never worry about money or I'm concerned about money. We're lucky enough that, that that's not really something that, that we're worried about. Um, so I wasn't going, oh, I don't have that income. You know, in fact, we probably ended up making, um, I think, $80,000 less than in previous years as the business, but there were $80,000 less of expenses and there was a thousand percent more time. Like I had a daughter on Halloween and, you know, I've got two sons and they're, you know, they're one six, one's two. So it was just extra daddy time. And, you know, and I'm like, I'll stay busy at the studio, but I'm going to take this week off because it's school vacation, you know, and my kid was, yeah. you know, this is his first year in kindergarten doing it remote. And now he's in, you know, going actually there. And so it was, you know, it made me reevaluate the company and go, you know what? I don't think we need those shows. I don't need to sell, you know, $300,000 worth of stuff. You know, I've got enough and I'm going to, you know, just concentrate on that. And then we'll kind of play it by ear, but it really took away that drive to be, you know, Uber American salesman. You know, I'm just like, mm. people, mama <laughs> stuff. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Um, so now and that's it's really interesting. That's really interesting because in a way, um, you know, you are working, creating your work in a sort of a different kind of uh, mechanism <laughs> than mm -hmm. say Catherine, right? Or Pedro. Yeah. Yep. Um, so that's and really that's interesting. Thing. And people don't look at it as art. You know, they don't understand that there's sculpting involved, that there's painting involved, there's color theory, there's, you know, even just, you know, it's like, how do we make things ugly by making the, you know, disproportionate and things, you know, all the things that you need to know to, to do like classical sculpture, but it's a mask and people just go, I want the mask. They don't, like if mm -hmm. I was just selling these as sculptures, I probably wouldn't be doing as well, you know? Interesting. And, and so for me, you know, uh, you know, every day I'm getting orders and I'm just like, <laughs> mom, I've got an art degree and people are buying my stuff. It's crazy. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> bravo. It can Good happen. Snaps to yeah. that. Let's yep. go. Um, Love that. And as we go along, you know, there's other projects that I want to do. So, you know, it's like, because I'm always kind of thinking big picture and I'm like, well, if we make this dragon head then we can open like a dragon academy that we can have people come and learn about dragons and then if we're going to have that then let's talk to authors so we can have uh you know youth novels about this this thing and then cool. oh well let's do let's talk some animators and let's do this so it's always ends up being multi-dimensional as things blossom just because we let it grow organically yeah. and i just make what i want to do so i get excited about it you got to chat with merrick bennett who was oh. on campfire last week Oh That's yeah. Something cool. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. You know, I'm I'm always looking for collaborators because I realize like I have a skill set. Um, but there's other and and you know, I always tell my son, like, you can learn anything. You you know, there's YouTube will teach you how to do anything you want, but it's better if you can get other people to be passionate about those projects too. 
um, you know, and, and, you know, I started off all this making movies, uh, you know, um, or doing like special effects for movies. Um, and, you know, and, and having to be on set at 4am and, and, you know, just the, the grind that, that, that big production, like small productions and big productions, you're either working on someone's passion project. And so, you know, you're putting in like, 18 hours a day for no money or you're doing someone's big you know project where you're putting 18 hours a day for for more money um but it's it was one of those things where eventually i was just like you know what this isn't what i want to be it's cool you know Mm -hmm. i've met some cool people and done some cool things but i like working nine to five and having weekends Mm -hmm. off and you know and that works so well with my family and stuff right now so it's uh i do very little art at home now because uh you know i get it all out here (laughs) yeah cool yeah how about amy like how are you walking through the world now in terms of your communication about what you make and the value of the things that you make well um when covid began and and everything began to really push to the online platform um i'm a tech phobe i i have like this really big issue with building websites or you know any of it i lived in a part of the world where there wasn't any internet and there wasn't any cell service for like 15 years so when i moved back here 5 years ago it was like ah and then with covid the push was to get it online of which i feel i've totally failed miserably my website is still under construction <laughs> um so i really had to kind of analyze, okay, if I hate being on the computer and doing sales this way, what am I going to do? So then I began to reach out and search for more storefront gallery front. um, And and that's my outlet to sell. And from those sales, I gain clients who want custom work and it just kind of rolls from there. Um, But um, like Jeremiah was saying, although, you know, I certainly could use to make more money, um, it's not, I've realized that it, I, if, when I focus on, oh my gosh, I have to make money. So I have to get X amount of pieces done and I have to, nothing comes out right. I, I just, that can't be my focus. My focus has to come from the heart into the piece. And then it will find its forever home. So that's someday when I grow up, maybe I'll learn how to use a computer the right way. (laughs) You just need to find someone that already knows how to use it. And then, you you know, use their skills. And that's, you know. Out there. Uh (laughs) (laughs) This is a PSA. Someone come help Amy. (laughs) It's awesome. Uh, I just want to kick it over to Catherine because um, I know that you have made some choices about how to propel your work um, by eliminating certain platforms. Will you talk a little bit about how you're walking through the world and how you're sharing your work right now? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I um I left social media, um, well, I left Instagram just over a year ago, um, and, and Facebook would have been maybe even five years ago, um, because I think we're, I think artists, but I think the whole world generally, and all individuals are fed this fallacy that social media is the thing that we need in our lives, and I kind of think that's not true, um, <laughs> and and I think that if if the for me when the the negative side effects of social media, um, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, kind of began to outweigh any benefits, I was like, there's nothing else in my life where I'll like continue to do this thing that feels bad for my brain, bad for my body, bad for my soul, and definitely bad for my art practice. Because how much could do I actually make when I'm thinking about 
how will I share that on Instagram? So I just gave up on it because I also, I don't know who makes, I don't know who runs Instagram. I don't know uh, who, and there's no other form of my communication where I let there be a mediator between me and the people I want to talk to. The principles in my practice is that I am in a room with the people that I'm making work with and for and by. And so I needed to start to find other ways to speak directly with my clients, my customers, my audience, my collaborators. And it, it's like a work in progress, right? A year later, and I'm still figuring that out. And I haven't made the choices, but I've also realized I didn't need to. When I really thought about what work did I get through social media, nothing. What work do I get by sitting down and having conversation like this with other artists? That's where it all comes from. That's where inspiration comes from. That's where work comes from. And so I didn't need it. So I've become a bit of an evangelist for like, you don't need social media. Don't learn it. Just leave it. Leave it and pick up the phone and give someone a call. I'd rather, you know, call Pedro and be like, hey, you want to go get a coffee and talk about what we might do together? Or Jeremy, anybody here? You know, and I just think... I know that wouldn't work for everybody's practice, but I'm constantly trying to ask myself, what do I do that I think I should do? <laughs> and then that usually isn't what I should be doing because there is no should. What would I like to do? What do I need to do? What could I do rather than I should? Because should is someone else's pressure on us. That's, that's oppression. And I'm trying to live an anti-oppressive, anti-racist life. And so, yeah. So I just left. <laughs> I just left all <laughs> forms of communication. And now I sit in my own artist hovel and <laughs> right away and talk to nobody. No, that's not true. <laughs> that is not true. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Through the um, several conversations we've had, inevitably we're talking about the push for technology and how we market the work that we're doing and how we share that, especially in these moments of isolation. And there's been, I think, you know, Ginny can chime in on this too. There is like a really sort of stark divide between people who are embracing um, putting their things out um, as publicly and as broadly as possible with the different kinds of tech mechanisms and people who've gone um, the other way to think about ways they can build face-to-face um, -face relationships, even though that is challenging in the moment. So um, yeah, it's uh, always leaves my own mind with, you know, is there a balance? Um, you know, what are other people doing? Is this mechanism working? Does this have value? Am I hurting someone by doing this or not doing this, right? Am I hurting myself? That's, um, yeah, these are conversations that could be for the next, <laughs> next time we could spend a whole day. So what, so speaking of this balance, right, of sharing and building relationships, Pedro, your work is like at once intimate and public. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. So um, with, with visual arts in terms of photography and videography and filmmaking, um, the internet is growing when it comes for the place to put all of that stuff into a point where not just us, but even big Hollywood studios, they have no other choice than to adapt to it. So what I've been doing is like a lot of my work I've been putting it because I couldn't I couldn't just go out and have it you know at an, an exhibit or it's kind of hard to, to know what to do with photography you know what I mean with filmmaking so I put it all online and I actually got involved with a very nice community of film photographers on the internet which so to my surprise is it is the most positive the most 
deconstructing community I have ever had to deal with on the internet. And it forced me to see a lot of the work that they're doing and try to work on a lot of stuff that is somewhat in that field. It, got, it, it, it helped me get to know things that I didn't know before, different kinds of work, different kinds of, uh, um, of products. And I've been focusing on a lot of that. I've been, I've been working on a lot, a lot of like landscape photography, which is something that a lot of people love to consume. You know, it's sometimes you see a photograph over here and it has trees, it has a, a good landscape. But at the same time, I love to try to like portray a certain feeling through these pictures, even though it's just me and the camera and I'm working by myself and I'm going to places that I'm like, I don't even know how to shoot the scene. And it's they publishing it online for everyone to see, for everyone to consume, was a good way for me to get feedback on it, for me to get to know other people that are doing the same thing that I do, and hopefully eventually build some connections, in-person connections with the people that first saw my my uh, my work online because i as you, as everybody said like the in the person to person interaction the in person kind of working together and, and kind of feeding off of each other's creativity is the best way to work on anything because you're dealing with people you know and you're there is there is there is an energy in the air that you do not get when you're texting somebody when you're on the phone with somebody <laughs> When you're messaging or emailing something you have to be face to face with that person and i think it's something that i can't wait to get to work in situations like that now <laughs> yeah that's awesome it's like amy said right your heart flows into the process of what you're making so you know our time our window for this conversation is fleeting and i want to ask each of you and pedro since you're here on the floor right now what is your dream project? Like if you could manifest anything, what is it? All right, so I have a million dreams in my head that pretty much fluctuate the whole day and they come, they come and go. But my biggest dream ever is to be able to work on a fictional world, a story world that incorporates world folklore and world music and everything that can bring many different kinds of cultures together into one thing. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to get there, but that's my goal for the next couple decades. <laughs> epic, that's so epic. Jeremy, what's your dream project? Um, so my, I always see my end goal and I never know if I'll be able to achieve my end goal. But for some reason, I want to create an immersive environment theme park. All right. And it's so multidiscipline of everything that, that's there. But it is, in essence, what I'd love to create. Um, and that's kind of maybe that's, you know, why I like Disney so much. But, but something similar to that that can world build. That people, you know, and, you know, and you get to involve so many different artists between painters and sculptors and, and, and just the story environment. Um, everything that I do, I, I love to help other people create memories and experiences, um, you know, and that's really what the art facilitates, you know. So it's a big dream. And, and, and we've got little chunks that, that we're working on, but eh, you never know what can happen, right? Right, you never know. You have to put it in the universe. Mm. Amy, what's your dream project? My dream project is to have a big piece of rock, preferably marble, <laughs> and, and try my hand at carving and sculpting something out of that. that that's on my bucket list of, I've got to try it. I got to just once give it a try so it's it's on the list it's over there I'll get to it eventually <laughs> that's awesome that's so awesome Catherine what's your dream project for today uh, oh <laughs> yeah for today and I dare to say I have found dreaming very difficult in this last 
year. Um, but I think it's it's a project that I've like ha like half started. I have a play called At the Table that is about uh, eating together and the food that we come from. Um, and I was able to produce that in 2015, which now sounds a long time ago. But what I'd love to do is remount that and begin to tour that work because I think now is the perfect moment to be able to sit down with loved ones and strangers over food <laughs> and safely talk and eat and learn about each other and learn about the worlds that we come from so and I did love good food so I think <laughs> I think that's maybe the dream project right now is is getting that off the ground um in that same way that Jeremy said earlier about like the where artists are recreating reality um I kind of want to to, sh to show the realities we've all been living in sitting at our own tables but now just explode that out and say we can once again sit at each other's tables yeah it's wonderful so the last question for today um is maybe less of a question and more of a um shout out to the community in which you live and work I'm curious if we were to come to your town or your region, um, I want to know what your what you would recommend um, for people to see, do, eat, watch, experience. So, Catherine, since you were just speaking, I'm going to start with you. Ah, uh, <laughs> so you like eat experience. Um, okay, so you would have to walk down town, go to Commercial Alley in Portsmouth and go to Elfantine Bakery and pick up a cappuccino and some of their delicious baked goods and then go walk down to Prescott Park and just watch the river flow and think about who has been nourished by that river for um, generations, thousands of years, um, and who is being nourished now and who do we want to be nourished in the future? I think there's no better art than a river flowing into the sea. Awesome. Amy, so I know you told us a little bit about Lancaster, but tell us more. Well, I'd like to, I, Lancaster, I pretty much told you everything there is to tell because it's a really, really tiny place. Um, but where I work and spend most of my time when I'm not at my bench at home is in Littleton, which is about 20 minutes from here. And Littleton is this beautiful, this little town that's just bursting with art. It's just starting to really take off. It's right on the Amanusic River. There's all kinds of live music and art events. Of course, you've got the Littleton School. You could stop in and say hi. The gorgeous studio space, great classes. Um, you could start up the hill at Deep Earth Arts, which is a little oasis of peace and tranquility amongst a lot of really beautiful things. And there's numerous great places to eat there and, and depending on what you like, um, you can't go wrong with stopping in, in Littleton for sure. Keep, a, keep your eye out for the arts festivals that are gonna be coming up there because there's all kinds of exciting things that are gonna be happening up here in the North Country. <laughs> it is, it's awesome, it's so fun. And you should all go to the Polish Princess for some more yummy baked goods and I guess there. <laughs> How could I have done that? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Jeremy, talk about Gosstown. What's going on? Uh, well, we're, you know, the, the lesser known neighbor to Manchester. Um, so, um, you know, Gosstown is that, that, especially if you go into to downtown, it's it's very much like uh, like a little Littleton, um, like cut Littleton in half, and that's what you have in Gosstown. Um, and so it was really kind of nice, you know. They have the the local uh, you know seasonal events and stuff like that. Uh, but honestly, because I've got three kids, you know, six two and and zero, um, the only place you really go out, and you know, right now is like Chuck E. Cheese, um, you know, which I wouldn't necessarily is a is a big cultural event that people should travel for. Um, stay with your local one is probably better. Um, 
but you also got like Mount Unkanunik. Um, it's got a lot of uh, beautiful hiking trails uh, and, and stuff. And if you get a chance um, to go into downtown Manchester, go to the bookery. Um, and it's a, it's a wonderful bookstore. Go into the kids area and you'll see a giant 15 foot tree with fiber optics. And we built that, uh, you know, hand weaving 16,000 fiber optics through netting is not as much fun as it sounds. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, with, with bookstores and, in reality dying left and right, it's a great place to go and to see flourish. So that's awesome. And they make a mean cappuccino there. Mm. And you can also go across the street to dancing lion chocolates. And if you're gonna have a chocolate shop, like I am sometime in the future, you mm -hmm. should go there. <laughs> First, I need to learn how to make chocolate. But mm, it's it's superfluous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Awesome. Pedro, talk to us about Concord. Yes, so Concord is the best place to come downtown, walk around, look at places, go into local restaurants, and to take a look at Campbell Jenkins State, in the Campbell Jenkins School of Art, which is probably my favorite place in town. They are out there for the arts. They are out there to support all artists, every kind of artist, from performing performance artists to visual artists. And, um, and they actually were very supportive of me when I was working on my last two projects. I filmed two projects at Kimball Jenkins State, The Second Life and the Priest. And uh, they have a lot of events going on. They have a lot of stuff happening to help the community, to work with the community. And it's really, they're a really cool team to get involved with if you are an artist in the area. Yes, and they just put down a dance floor. <laughs> so it's a beautiful space to be a dancer and 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 go with a collaboration with Eastern Ballet Institute and you can go take adult classes there with Kelly Diamond if you want this summer so yay KJ so good so good well if you happen to pop up to the lakes region in Ashland you should definitely check out Witten Woods which is a local sort of hiking biking trail and you should go check out the covered bridge on Little Squam Lake, which is very, very beautiful. And if you love a good museum tour, check out the Museum of the White Mountains at Plymouth State University, which is reopening to the public. And we're all so excited about that. So um, I want to just say thank you for this like effervescent beautiful conversation. Uh, I wish we could continue all day. And um, I do hope that as the summer rolls on, there'll be an opportunity for, um, for us to gather around a real campfire and eat good food and see each other in person and continue the conversations. Um, I'll make sure that everyone has each other's contact. And for those of you who are joining us um, now live or we'll watch um, post uh, production. We'll make sure we have all the information for these artists um, made available to you so you can continue to check out their work and pick up the phone and give them a call. <laughs> um, thank you so much for today. I hope you make it a beautiful one and do something that makes you feel whole and kind and artistic <laughs> thanks y'all i hope you have a great day thank you thank, thank you everybody thank you.